I am Louis Pasteur, French chemist and microbiologist renowned for my discoveries of the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization, the latter of which was named after me. The American Chemical Society polled experts some time ago to identify the most beautiful experiment in the history of chemistry, they responded by giving the highest ranking to my separation of mirror image molecular forms of tartaric acid, conducted just a year after I gained my doctorate in Paris, in 1845. My experiments paved the way to the discipline of microbiology, as well as the way to the discovery, at the end of the 19th century, of nature's molecular catalysts, enzymes, the key agents of biochemistry. Living organisms make precise distinctions between chiral molecules. In all living systems, homochirality is produced and maintained by enzymes, which are themselves composed of homochiral amino acids that are specified through homochiral DNA and produced via homochiral messenger RNA, homochiral ribosomal RNA, and homochiral transfer RNA. No one has ever found a plausible abiotic explanation for how life could have become exclusively homochiral. In life, the homochirality of amino acids, for example, is synthesized and achieved by specialized enzymes, called aminotransferase, which turn amino acids left-handed homochiral. In nature, however, they exist in racemic, mixed form, left, and right-handed. Life only uses a 100% homochiral molecules. That is a major, unsolved abiogenesis problem, and has persisted since I discovered homochirality, over 170 years ago. I believe that life only comes from life. Little science takes you away from God but more of it takes you to Him. A source of conviction in the existence of God, connected with the reason and not with the feelings, impresses me as having much weight. This follows from the extreme difficulty or rather impossibility of conceiving this immense and wonderful universe, including man with his capacity of looking far backwards and far into futurity, as the result of blind chance or necessity. When thus reflecting I feel compelled to look to a first cause having an intelligent mind in some degree analogous to that of man. The impossibility of conceiving that this grand and wondrous universe, with our conscious selves, arose through chance, seems to me the chief argument for the existence of God. The mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I for one must be content to remain an agnostic. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. I am Ulrich Becker, MIT Professor Emeritus of High Energy Particle Physics. How can I exist without a Creator? I am not aware of any answer ever given. I am William Well. Born in 1794. English polymath, scientist, Anglican priest, philosopher, theologian, and historian of science. Those who have obtained the farthest insight into nature have been, in all ages, firm believers in God. I am Johannes Kepler, born in 1571. German astronomer, polymath. When things are in order, if the cause of the orderliness cannot be deduced from the motion of the elements or from the composition of matter, it is quite possibly a cause possessing a mind. If the analogy of two phenomena be very close and striking, while, at the same time, the cause of one is very obvious, it becomes scarcely possible to refuse to admit the action of an analogous cause in the other, though not so obvious in itself.